I'm afraid there's so much to unpack with the Hunter Biden conviction. So two convictions relating to presidential families within 10 days. And uh, that, that's astonishing. And it must be shaking not only those two families, but also the American administration, the American justice system, because this now ties up both sides of the political debate. First of all, let's get the details of the um, figure who is often quoted, but the BBC very rarely gives us details about the, uh, the, the, the actual individual. So when, when it comes to Trump, people say, oh yes, but you can in fact still run as a presidential candidate from prison. And the example is a person called Eugene Debs. And he was a he was an American socialist, a, po a political activist in a trade union. And he ran for president as the Socialist Party candidate five times, with the most famous campaign being from prison in 1920. And why was he in prison? Because in 19... 18, he was convicted under the Espionage Act for a speech he gave in Ohio uh, that opposed the American involvement in World War I. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. And despite being incarcerated in a prison in Atlanta, he ran uh, a presidential campaign from his cell and he received, and this is the astonishing bit, he received nearly a million votes uh, around 3.4% of the total votes cast that year, showing significant support for his ideas and for the socialist movement in the United States at the time, highlighting labor rights, social justice, anti-war sentiments. It resonated with America despite his imprisonment. And had he not been in prison, then it's possible that he could have done incredibly well. Uh as for as for this camp, uh, this this issue of Trump and Hunter Biden, the big question is whether justice has been weaponized, which is one of the uh, which is one of the accusations, and how much it will impact on the forthcoming presidential campaign. So both Hunter Biden and Donald Trump have faced legal scrutiny based on allegations of wrong behavior, of wrongdoing. Hunter Biden's conviction relates to uh, charges about tax uh, and also about his attempt to buy a gun. And the three, um, uh, the three charges clearly today, all of which um, he's, he's been, been found guilty on today. The tax stuff will come later. Well, Donald Trump's convictions have involved issues like fraud, legal breaches, uh, paying people hush money or paying one person hush money. And each case has gone through its own judicial process, uh, which suggests that the law is functioning exactly as intended and that justice is as is depicted on the top of so many legal buildings, blindfolded and uh, impartial, uh, completely, <laughs> completely um, uninfluenced by the political clout, the wealth, the status of the person being investigated. But the political context cannot be ignored. The timing of both of these cases gives rise to perceptions of political manipulation. And given the highly um, polarized political climate in the United States at the moment, actions against political, prominent political figures or their families must be viewed through a partisan lens. Critics from both sides um, have argued 
that um, there is political gain being levered out of the legal system. It's unprecedented for a child of a sitting president and a former president to face legal charges. It's unprecedented. There is no... Uh, today, a president has been broken. Last week or the week before, a president was broken with Trump. It reflects a broader trend, not only in the United States, but globally, of legal the legal scrutiny of political figures. And given the fact that there is now a process uh, of looking at historical uh, legal issues, I think people, uh, uh, people who have question marks hanging over them, let's say, about the Iraq war, cannot breathe a sigh of relief and may well find themselves in the dock. This is... I, I, this sets a historical precedent for um, ignoring the influence of people in power. And, uh, and, and the question probably is, does, does this blindfolded approach increase or decrease the public trust in the legal system? Because the legal system has taken on these two high-profile figures, does that make for greater trust or because they've taken on these legal, these two high profile figures at this particular time when it's going to have maximum political impact does that reduce political uh, the public's trust in the legal system so th th there's there's a certain amount of a certain amount of um, on the one hand on the other hand going on here media coverage has of course increased the tension, it plays a significant role in not only the reporting of these events, but shaping opinions and, and indeed massaging the presentation of both these cases. Media outlets have their own bias, as we know, for example, in the UK from GB News, as America knows from Fox and so on, which can influence how events are reported, how events are interpreted by the public, and by the public also means by the jury, by the judges. The jury and the judges are not immune from the sea of public debate which precedes and follows these cases. So even when charged to deal with the evidence presented in the court, a jury is, of course, influenced by the build-up and by the momentum. You cannot take a public figure like a former president or a sitting president's son and pretend that there is no context. So justice in this case is a matter of perspective and I think that's being challenged at this moment. Now, uh, in terms of the Hunter Biden thing, if the plea bargain had gone ahead, Hunter Biden originally reached a plea bargain deal with the federal prosecutors to resolve two tax misdemeanor charges and the gun felony charge. The deal was intended to allow him to plead guilty to the tax charges to enter a pre-trial a uh, diversion program for the gun charge, which could eventually lead to the dismissal of the gun charge if he complied with the terms of the program. We know that he is a drug user because he's written about it and he's done the audio book, which was played in the courtroom. The defense said, well, he wasn't taking drugs at the time when he filled in this form to buy a gun. And this is a gun that he never used, never carried, never loaded. During the court hearing in Delaware, um, several issues led to the collapse of the plea agreement. First of all, uh, the scope of immunity. There was confusion and there was disagreement about um, 
how much immunity he would receive as part of that plea deal, and his defence team believed that the agreement would grant him broad immunity from future prosecution for his business dealings, whereas prosecutors stated that it was limited only to the specific charges outlined. His business deals, dealings, of course, involving uh, the Ukraine allegations. The presiding judge, uh, Judge Mary Ellen Norica, is it Norica or Noriika? Uh, she, she said there was um, uh, concern about the structure and the clarity of the agreement. She questioned whether the deal was appropriate and whether it included um, sufficient legal precedents. And her, her, her questioning was rigorous and it revealed ambiguities, differing interpretations between the defense and the prosecution. It was badly worded. And she raised issues regarding the legality, the precedent that it in turn would set, uh, you know, wh whether it was based on other precedents or not. Um, and uh, particularly the inclusion of a non-prosecution clause within the diversion agreement for the gun charge. And the fact that it was so unusual meant that the judge was bound to be talking about it, was bound to question it. Um, so that, that collapse was, was partly because of the stupidity of his defence team in drawing up a plea bargain that was not watertight, that wasn't um, thought through sufficiently. Uh, we will come to the uh, tax charges later, I presume, and that could um, that that could have an impact on what happens uh, on how the judge carries out uh, sort of um, enforces a the sentence. There's no um, there's no there's no clear uh, th there are guidelines, but there's no clear. Um, Set, set in stone decision about what 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 a specific charge should merit what a specific verdict should merit so it is possible that although he could face 10 years plus in prison he could equally be given some sort of probation he could equ uh, he could be he could be let off lightly i'm sure the judge will be aware that this will have a political impact on a family which is very close and which has already suffered immense tragedy. And this must have an effect on President Biden himself. Um, but, you know, the, 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 the problem is that this is a man, Hunter Biden, who has uh, taken advantage of the influence that he has because he was the vice president's son. He's taken advantage of his position in his business dealings, um, in, uh, as, uh, serving on the board of uh, Burisma, the Ukrainian energy company, um, and his role in Burisma, especially during his father's tenure as vice president, uh, has of course been scrutinized. His emails, his communications uh, suggest, allegedly, that he... Um, that he may have attempted to leverage, uh, uh, to, 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 to gain advantages because of his family connections to, to, to get better business deals. But there's no direct influence, there's no direct evidence linking um, his actions to illegal conduct or indeed implicating Joe Biden in what is contested. So, uh, although he filed his tax late, and although his business dealings look dodgy, there may be explanations, there may be um, way, ways around this, and I think uh, any, any judge would have, to, would, would, would have to bear in mind the efforts and the goodwill to the family, the recovery from addiction, and so on. 
that's what makes that's what makes it in a sense so different to the Donald Trump situation. So on the face of it, the Hunter Biden thing looks significantly worse. This is a man who faces clear prison time. But he he is clearly a changed character. He's clearly worked through his problems and his problems were highly dependent on his dependency. Whereas Donald Trump pours scorn at the judge and the legal system itself. Whereas Biden says, you know, we, we, we will comply with whatever is decided. We, will, we, we, we are humble in the face of justice. Not so Donald Trump. Donald Trump has faced multiple legal challenges, um, including issues of business fraud, the obstruction of justice, and so on. But the, the, the recent charge... Uh, connected to the operations of the Trump organization to silence uh, a, a a working lady um, and the the um, hmm, the intertwining of the of the case with his political career and his efforts to regain the presidency and to maintain his superiority, his uh, arrogant um, contempt for convention means that he has taken a position where he has been highly critical of the judge who is now about to sentence him. I, I think we could well see a very interesting situation where Hunter Biden is treated quite leniently, and President Trump is treated quite firmly. We could well see a situation where Trump thinks that he's going to get off, and uh, I, I don't suppose I should use the term get off with, in respect to Trump because he's tried to get off with so many people in the past, allegedly. Uh, and, uh, and, and he could find himself... He could find himself incarcerated. Um, this is criminal. This is personal. This is political. This has significant scope and scale to rock America at a time when there is international crisis and uh, at a time when the, when the country is polarized in the run-up to a presidential election. So the two, the two cases are different in nature um, and different in uh, the, the two individuals who are facing sentencing in the next few months are different in character. Um, uh, but media coverage is sharp and is greedy, and the, the 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 whole thing, both cases have huge political implications about the credibility of the two presidential candidates and the broader narrative of justice in the United States, uh, and, and whether whether it has as. Um, has been alleged, wh whether it has been politically weaponized uh, to break the election.